Around 12 million years ago, a giant sea was disconnected from the world's oceans. Spanning across southern Europe and northwestern Asia, the mega lake Paratethys was the largest lake to ever exist. Life in this lake evolved for the next 5 million years, cut off from the rest of the world, including miniature whales. In this video, we will learn about the Paratethys and the animals that called it home. We will also learn how this mega lake went from a watery paradise and transformed into a toxic death trap. Enjoy. The Paratethys was originally an epicontinental sea like the Mediterranean Sea, and was formed 34 million years ago from remnants of the northern Tethys Ocean. Then, as the central European mountain ranges grew, the sea became landlocked, and around 12 million years ago it separated from the world's oceans. The Paratethys Lake sprawled across Europe and Asia, and covered an area of 2.8 million kilometers squared, making it much larger than the Mediterranean Sea. The lake stored an estimated 1.77 million kilometers cubed of brackish water. This volume represents more than 10 times all the fresh and salt water presently stored in lakes. To better put this in perspective, the total water volume of the American Great Lakes is 22,671 kilometers cubed, making the Paratethys Lake roughly 78 times larger than the Great Lakes of today. Despite being separated from the oceans, life in the Paratethys Mega Lake bared resemblance to life in the seas. Chasing after the fish were seals and even a species of beaked whale Heterodelphus. The most notable inhabitant of the Paratethys Mega Lake was the tiny whale Cetotherium Rhea Benini, and I hope I pronounced that correctly. This species of Cetotherium is credited to be the smallest baleen whale to have ever existed. This species measured 3 meters in length, making them smaller than modern day bottlenose dolphins. Modern day baleen whales feed by gulp feeding, where they use their large mouths to engulf prey and swallow large amounts of prey whole. This is made possible by their curved lower jaw bones and massive throat pouches. However, a study done on Cetotherium rhea benini suggests that they may not have been able to gulp feed at all. The skull of the animal was more narrow and straight compared to modern day baleen whales, and they had a more narrow oral cavity, making the throat pouch either small or altogether absent. Instead, the scientists proposed that these animals most likely used a form of suction feeding, similar to modern day gray whales and mallard ducks. The Cetotherium would have gone down to the bottom of the Paratethys mega lake and used suction feeding to sift through the lake bed for crustaceans. Further research will continue to unravel the lives behind these now extinct whales, but one thing is for certain. Baby teeny weeny Cetotherium rhea beninis would have been one of the cutest things of the Neogene period. Unfortunately, this mega lake home to these miniature whales came to a tragic end. Between 9.75 and 7.65 million years ago, the lake experienced several partial desiccation episodes, or periods of intense drying. Over time, the lake lost one third of its water volume and 70% of its surface during the most extreme events. The remaining water became extremely toxic and barren due to higher salt concentrations. Most organisms became extinct and those that survived would have become sick and deformed, dying an excruciating death in this now toxic watery waste world. This included the Cetotherium, and thus the end of the world's largest lake meant the end of the world's smallest whale. Today's Black Sea, Caspian Sea, Aral Sea, Lake Ormia, and Lake Namak are all remnants of the Paratethys. Many of these lakes and seas are also facing extinction, and you can learn more about their conservation and revival efforts in the description below. Before I conclude this video, I want to give a special thank you to paleontologist Dr. Robert Bosenecker, who helped answer any questions I had during the research and production phase. I would also like to thank paleo artist Jamie Bran, who helped with the design for the Cetotherium Rhea Benini featured in this video. I will be linking both of their Twitter profiles in the description below so you can learn more about their work. I would like to thank M. Bigiani from Discord for helping me review my script. I would like to thank Ethan Lay Studio for the new track that was used in this video. And lastly, I would like to thank all of you guys for watching. 
If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel and sharing the video with your family and friends. Be sure to let me know in the comments below which animal featured in this video was your favorite. Follow Nature's Compendium on social media and Discord to stay up to date on all the latest projects. You can also support the channel on Patreon and get some neat rewards in return. The Patreon was originally going to launch in May of this year, however I decided to delay it until October at the latest, and in the coming months I will go more into detail about the Patreon page. Of course pledging to Patreon is not at all expected, and I'm already beyond grateful for all the support I receive and to everyone who sees my videos. So as always, thank you for watching.